uh, today, because it is January 2nd, 2024, we are talking about your year on SciStarter 2023 and how to explore your personal dashboard. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to share my dashboard for quite a bit of it. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about what's been accomplished this year. So in 2023, all these words are given to you. Um, now, if you are already an account holder on SciStarter, you're actually going to receive all this information in a nice personalized email that will share information about what you've accomplished this year. So look forward to that. But essentially, we had millions of individuals participating in groundbreaking research through thousands of projects on SciStarter. So if that includes you, thank you so much. Um, our top five projects, which are listed out in what they accomplished here, um, were Eterna, or excuse me, uh, stall catchers where you analyze thousands of videos to fight Alzheimer's and accelerate the research behind Alzheimer's. Uh, we made millions of observations of precipitation with cocoa bras. We logged thousands of species and even found some new ones with iNaturalist. Uh, we searched for brown dwarfs near the solar system with Backyard World's Cool Neighbors, which is a NASA project. Um, and we also hunted for new RNA-based medicines with Eterna. So if you were involved in Eterna, uh, Cool Neighbors, iNaturalist, cocoa bras, or stall catchers, Rest assured, your work has not been missed. It, they were the top projects on SciStarter. So very exciting to see um, what all of you accomplished with those. And we'll get outcomes from those projects too every once in a while. So um, every single bit of the observations you did or, uh, analyzation, or analysis, that's the word, that you did is noted. And we want to make sure that you understand what impact there is. And so we include recent news articles in this email that you'll receive which, um, Roland, can you actually grab that link that's sitting in there and drop it um, somewhere so we can remember to send it out? <laughs> uh, maybe in the Facebook chat, actually, it would be good. And you can learn more about the actual projects themselves and what they've accomplished. Now, if you're looking for new projects um, and to see what you've accomplished, you can look at your SciStar dashboard. So I'll keep moving so we can learn about that. Um, this year, just to put a little bit of a personal note on it, and to prove that it does show you things. Um, I clicked to join 84 projects this year, um, or 2023, I should say, and I contributed data 276 times to affiliate projects, which I think is pretty impressive. I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy the fact that it's two, over 200, nearly 300, um, and that's about to be blown out of the water because I'm fairly certain Roland did like 5,000 this year <laughs> in 2023. Um, so we'll, we'll see in a moment. We'll just have to duplicate your 180. 180 days and see what that amount is. Um, so in 2023, to understand what the entire community did, we have 178,000 registered users, which is awesome. And we tallied over 29,000 project signups, which is just incredible, kind of hard to even picture. And they participated in more than 150 SciStarter affiliate projects. So these are the ones where we can track when you do a uh, contribution so we can see how much your effort, um, it's like tracking volunteer hours essentially. And uh, over 2 million contributions were made to these affiliate projects. So um, amazing job, everyone. This is just incredible to see. Um, and with those top five that were mentioned before, this was just such a huge, 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 huge amount um, of progress for these projects. So thank you so much for all your efforts. If you're in this community, if you're not in this community, I bet you're very jealous listening to this. And so you should definitely check it out um, and get an account so you can join us. Awesome. So um, just for anyone who is looking for more, there are always new projects being added. So you can go ahead and look into those. I already mentioned the trainings, um, but if you visit our training page, which is just scistarter.org slash training, um, you'll be able to see the ones available to you and get started, which is kind of a fun thing to have a certificate. I have mine on my LinkedIn profile, so it's, it definitely shows off the skills that you gain from there. Um, if you live near a library that's engaged in citizen science, you can visit them to see if they have citizen science kits um, and actually do the projects with real materials um, or like lab materials, almost like a sky quality meter for globe at night, um, an air quality meter um, or air quality sensor, I should say, and, and a bunch of other things. So, and some of the libraries go a little bit over, not overboard, uh, very overboard in a good way where they make their own based on projects that matter to their community. So go ahead and reach out to them and ask if they have those. Um, for all of our affiliate projects, those are projects that have special relationships with us to make sure that we have very strong um, uh, strong support between the two of us. And you can also see how often you contribute, um, which helps us understand that 2 million contributions um, and our collective impact. So in order to know the most about how to make, or sorry, to know the most about SciStarter and make it work for you, we have um, posts on that on our blog as well, which we will, um, that would also be helpful in the Facebook um, commentary too, Roland. 
Sweet. Okay, last one, I promise. So in 2024, unless I think it's the last one, <laughs> we are going to push for more and more ways for you to get involved. And so we are expanding our collaborations with a thousand libraries, um, corporate volunteer programs, uh, growing cohort of museums, school districts, and Girl Scouts, um, and international instances of SciStarter, like uh, SciStarter Australia and two others. So if you are interested, stay tuned. We'll keep communicating these things out. Um, if you're interested in being a part of that, please send us an email. Uh, we would love to hear from you at info at scistarter.org. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of things to look forward to in 2024. But before we get to 2024, we kind of have to know about um, what's going on with our individual projects. So I'm actually going to pause my screen share because we'll come back to that 1 million acts of science um, as our ending note. Um, but for all of you who have a dashboard or are looking into having a dashboard, um, I want to make sure you have access and know how to look at it. So I'll go ahead and share my screen again with the quick steps before I show you mine. So when you have a SciStart account and you're logged in, um, meaning you go to scistart.org slash login, or you click the little login button at the top, um, you can then look at your dashboard, which is at um, scistart.org slash dashboard, or you can click the button that just says my dashboard at the top. Um, and the things you can do that, they're, they're, they're numerous. Um, I noted three here, so you can find your contribution since the start of your journey on SciStarter. So we'll see my contributions since I first got an account. Um, you can see your contributions for project, which I really enjoy and relates to my New Year's resolutions. So I'll share that too. And you can keep track of all the amazing projects you've discovered. Um, as someone who is generally flighty, <laughs> I forget which things I sign up for all the time. And so having this dashboard allows me to go back and be like, oh, that's the project I was thinking about that I really want to be a part of. I clicked a button and just out of sight, out of mind. Um, and so having that dashboard, I can go back and review which ones I was interested in and see um, how to get started um, at that moment, right? All right, so in order to do all those things, you're going to go to your internet, as I will as now. So I'm gonna go to the regular, just homepage for SciStarter. You can see what it looks like. So on SciStarter, I'm already logged in, so I'm good there. I could even go here and look at main dashboard, but another way you can get there is by hitting this dashboard button. And I'm gonna go ahead and visit my main dashboard. Um, I'm both a participant and also a project leader technically because I have added projects um, and events on here. And so I'm gonna go specifically to as a participant, which is likely what you would go to. Now to see what you've accomplished on here, I like to go to contributions to just see how cool I've been since June 3rd of 2022. Um, I will say I should have done, um, I should have been on sooner and now I'm sad that I have not been, but a lot of time to catch up since then. Uh, your contributions uh, are listed for the last 30 days if you're interested, the last 90 days um, and your last 180 days. Everything beyond that is unavailable to you separately, but we will have a year in review available to you shortly. So you can see everything from 2023. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, but the all time is always my favorite to look at, but I will note that my contributions have increased for the last 33 days, maybe because I had some vacation time, but who knows, right? Um, so depending on what you do, those things will be listed. So for example, um, I did 18 contributions to Soul Catchers. Here I went uh, on to Iguanas from Above and Silent Earth. Most recently, I was on Instant Wild doing OSA um, Camera Trap Network and Borneo Cam, which are both quite fun because you just look at fun pictures of animals um, in a camera trap image set, and they're doing funny things, and you just have to figure out what what kind of animal they are, um, and then you send it into the uh, into the project, and it helps them understand conservation. So, all these projects relate to a different thing, which is really fun to see, like the spread of what your interests have been over time too. Man, I need to get back to that stall catchers 18. <laughs> now, the second thing I mentioned in there is that you can also go, I'm gonna uh, tap on affiliates here. Um, so for all your stats, for all of these projects, you can actually go and see individual stats. So um, for the OSA camera trap network, which I just mentioned, I've given them exactly six contributions. That is quite low. I feel like I could do more, but that was one sitting, right? So if you are, for example, looking for one that you participate a lot in, like my iNaturalist might be. Yeah, so 33 contributions since 2022 in June. Um, and then I'm looking for stall catchers because that'll probably be the most, which is a little bit more fun to look at. Um, and this is where I was thinking, since Roland is on the line, you might have a project that has quite a few contributions or you can just show us what your contributions have been. So I'm going to prepare you by saying this now. Of course, stall catchers might've been like the first one I was in, unless for some reason, 
Okay, well, I'll fix that in the meantime. Um, so, Ron, I'm going to stop my share briefly. Do you want to share with us what you've accomplished in the last year? <laughs> it's going to so blow these are mine the out of the water. That's, yeah, these are the old times that... Nice. Uh, yeah, 468 since, yeah, projects yeah. total? <laughs> oh, that makes sense, though. <laughs> yeah. In, you cheat because that's your job. Me. Yeah, I mean, I'm currently testing all aff affiliates, so yeah, it has <laughs> to wake up to these numbers, to these crazy True. numbers. Excellent. But, Do you want to click on your contributions? Yeah. I'm curious how yours has changed over. Um, whoa, okay. Yeah. So since, since December 4th, 2021. Look at that. Yeah. Since I first started. Nice. But what's mo even more impressive is... Uh, people who don't do this as a job uh, also get uh, such high numbers. Some people are very, very uh, dedicated. For example, on iNaturalist, where you have to, to submit an image of a living organism, each image or each submission counts as one contribution. And some mm -hmm. people are really uh, dedicated and just keep on submitting things or classifying things like you did on on instant wild so uh yeah yeah it can get addictive if someone likes really likes <laughs> citizen science absolutely it's it's fun too because the the um, the groups that we reached out to because we had a couple of volunteers online with us a couple weeks ago for one of these Story live events and if you're interested for anyone who is listening in you can go back and watch the recording on youtube but it is really fun to see just how many contributions they did in, in order for us to contact them as a top contributor. It was in the, like the, uh, of the five digits, <laughs> five digits, uh, numbers, like 38,000 contributions, which was just really incredible to see. And in some cases, these are individuals who may work on the project. Um, but oftentimes they're not like, there's only one or a couple of people who work on these projects. Otherwise it is legitimately these star volunteers who are just really into these projects. Um, a really good example of this too, I'm, I'm just gonna jump over to stall catches really fast because um, while we we value your privacy, so we're not gonna show anything on our um, on our site that uh, shows the contribution by person, but um, on stall catchers, they do an actual, um, they do an actual, all teams, um, an actual leaderboard. Thank you, that's what I was trying to say. Um, a leaderboard and so, yeah. Yeah, could you could you show us how to link Zooniverse and iNaturalist? Because we have something in the chat. Uh, one attendee has oh. been using Zooniverse, but apparently they don't have their account linked. So oh no, yeah, we that. totally can do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, just briefly, because then I'll forget. Oh, uh, wait. Um, I just wanted to show off how awesome this person is. <laughs> five billion contribution or a score of five billion, I should say. Um, that's not specific to contributions, but they are number one and they are awesome. So thank you, Star Rider, as our example person for that. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and stop my share for a second so I can switch back. Um, that is a good point. So if you are seeing that you do a lot of work and you don't see it showing up on your project pages, um, for one, for Zooniverse and iNaturalist, this won't be the case because they are affiliates, um, or most of Zooniverse uh, projects are. Some of them might not be counted, though, because there aren't they aren't affiliates. Um, so my friend in the chat, if that is what's happening, that could be the case for some of them. Um, but for the projects that are affiliates, um, we the uh, uh, contributions are tracked through your profile for Zooniverse and INET. So I'll go ahead and share my screen one more time. So if you are on your info and settings on your dashboard, there's a section in here called affiliation integration. And so what I did is I add my iNaturalist username, which is Easy Giles, and then my Zooniverse username is the same thing because I'm super unoriginal, um, or at least makes it easy to remember. So if, as long as you have your um, usernames in here, it should be tracking. So as I mentioned before, though, there's not all Zooniverse projects are affiliates, and then iNaturalist might, uh, or it'll count through the regular iNaturalist project. So just be aware of that. <laughs> um, but assuming it is an affiliate, or if you realize you're doing one that you want to be an affiliate because it's the majority of your contributions, um, you can send us an email too. And we can always um, see if we can get that moving quicker. Um, but hopefully that helps. These are, oh, good. Okay, yes. 
Um, will it grandfather in activity? I'm actually not sure. Rowan, do you know if it, it probably doesn't track previous. I think that starts the tracking process, unfortunately. Yeah, we okay, can ask and reply back. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, do you want to send us your email in the chat? Because we can send you an email later and, um, and check for you. Because <laughs> I'm not positive. My thinking is that it starts the tracking then. Um, but if you have a, like a number of what you have on Zooniverse, you might be able to just have that in your back of mind too. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm, awesome. Okay, perfect. I am making a note elsewhere. Okay, cool. Um, all right, I think I got through all the contributions. If you have, or the um, how to look at your dashboard, um, but I would recommend just going through and just seeing how awesome you are because sometimes you just need a pat on the back at the end of the year to be like, okay, um, great job. Now what's next? Um, for anyone who is not anti New Year's resolutions, which in my mind, I find them quite difficult. This is a really good time to make a New Year's resolution. I personally um, struggle every year. And so I've just stopped making them. But this year, uh, we had a group online with us uh, for SciStar Live a couple weeks ago um, called Iguanas from Above. And I don't remember if it was during the actual uh, call where we were live or if it was after the fact when we were chatting with them. Um, but they mentioned how important it was that we have individuals working on this project now um, and how it's it's like in a it's in a section of the project where they want a big push for participation because they need to wrap up this data set. Uh, and so because of that, um, I put in my head like, OK, yes, I'm going to go on and do this. So I've been pseudo guilt tripped by myself. Um, into making a bigger uh, push on myself to work on specific projects like Iguanas from Above. So I have like a list in my head, mostly Iguanas from Above, but a couple others that I've been interested in, like Bud Burst um, and others, to give a little bit more effort this year. And so my New Year's resolution this year is to do more contributions to Iguanas from Above. Um, and I hope that I can make that. Um, I, did, I did four in one sitting. So if I did that once a month... <laughs> That probably won't work though, because I don't think they'll be live for a full year on, um, or hopefully not, hopefully we'll be done before then. Um, but making a goal for how many contributions you want to do per month, let's say I'm nice to my, or like very, very low effort on my part, maybe 10 a month um, to just get myself more involved. That'll probably end up being way more contributions just simply because I get myself online um, to do the project. So for any of you who are looking for a very productive way to spend your New Year's resolution, that's something that you can accomplish. I would recommend just picking a project that you like um, or that you think you'll like. <laughs> you can always change it later and decide, hey, I think I'm going to work on this one more. And the bonus is if it's an affiliate project on SciStarter, you don't have to do any tracking for yourself. You can just start doing the project when you feel like it. And then later when you start saying, okay, how am I doing on that news resolution? We do the tracking. So you can go online on your dashboard and see just how many contributions you've done. Um, and so it'll make it much easier to do that. So as far as New Year's resolutions go and keeping yourself accountable, this is on the easy side of uh, making it work. So hopefully if any of you are sitting like, oh, maybe I should make one. Yes, you should make it about citizen science <laughs> and make it a project you care about. Um, Roland, any projects come to mind for you that you're interested in making a resolution for? Putting you on the spot. <laughs> well, uh, if weather permits, I'm planning to go on a hike this weekend. I rarely do hikes. I concentrate on other sports. I plan to, to go on a hike this weekend. Uh, that was a surprise. I will, I will try, <laughs> I will attempt to do as many projects as possible in one day. And I will try to photograph as many species as possible and just put them in iNaturalist, if weather permits. I love that goal. I think that's an excellent goal. Yeah. yeah. I think um, that is also something else you brought up that I didn't realize. If any of you are thinking about New Year's resolutions that exist already, where you just want to be outside more often, you feel like you're stuck inside, you don't have to be stuck inside. If you are motivated by citizen science or motivated by having an action um, given to you <laughs> or told to do, you can tell yourself to do some of these projects that are fully outside um, and get yourself moving. If you have a volunteer goal, for example, um, if you um, need a certain amount of hours by the end of the year, if you want to be outside, if you want to learn how to do something more challenging, there's a lot of projects that can get you to these goals too. So kind of a unique way um, that before I was with SciStarter, I didn't, I mean, I never considered these things as a possibility to keep myself accountable and move towards a goal that might not even, it might not be a citizen science related goal per se, but it would be like, 
I need to go outside more often. And to get me there, I can participate in the iNaturalist. Um, or I want to be more present about the plants that I have in my yard because I keep killing all my plants. That would be like a big, uh, big project for like Bud Burst, where you can track the seasonality of the projects while you take better care of them because you're focusing more on them, which would be a good thing for me. I kill every plant that I own. It's really sad. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I can quit that at some point. So if any of these are resonating with you, um, it could be a good idea to try something new and try to angle it in a way that keeps you accountable to something that you want to um, improve about yourself, right? Um, so looking forward to seeing what you all accomplish. And I hope that you share it with us. If you ever post on social media about these things, please do and at us at SciStarter. Um, and then we will hear about you and we'll repost and we'll make you super popular with your goals and applaud you. Excellent. Um, so a way to get started too with New Year's resolutions or a way to get yourself a goal in mind or a milestone. Um, I did want to share that we are in the process of starting our promotion for um, Citizen Science Month for all of you, which means um, I will share my screen again for you briefly. Go. Okay. Uh, you can't see that. Let's try that again. Um, so in April, for anyone who has been with us in the past, April is a really special month for us at SciStarter. It's a special month for anyone involved in citizen science because it is citizen science month. Um, and so for citizen science month in April, 2024, our goal, our new year's resolution for entirety of April is 1 million acts of science. And this relates to doing contributions to projects. So uh, doing one video on stall catchers counts as a, an act. Um, if you are submitting a, an observation on iNaturalist, that's an act of science. If you're going to a citizen science event, uh, if you're hosting an event, those are acts of science. Those are all things to promote citizen science to the world and for your own sake um, and to accelerate and advance the research that citizen science tries to do. So if you are interested in being a part of the biggest citizen science month event ever, it's global. It is a big goal of 1 million. Um, we want you there with us. And so we have a special sign up for participants um, and for anyone, really, um, you can sign up at uh, our SciStar.org slash Citizen Science Month. You can also go to citizenscienceMonth.org. And I'll actually go ahead and show you what that looks like, because um, on that page, you have an option of signing up uh, with us for a couple different reasons. So if you belong to any organizations or you're a teacher or you are a librarian, et cetera, there's another way for you to sign up that puts you in a better position for us to support you as well. So this is citizenscienceonth.org. And if you were to scroll down, you can hit participate or you can just scroll to see this. Um, I'll go ahead and go to participate. So we encourage you all, if you are just a person interested, you can go and sign up here. Uh, if you are a library, you can sign up here. <laughs> uh, if you are a project, a platform, if you're an event organizer, if you are a class, if you are representing a grade at a school, if you're re representing an entire school district even, we want you to sign up. This process um, allows us to understand how we can help each other. So when you sign up, you can write what you want to accomplish, what you want your group to accomplish, or what do you individually want to see, um, or what questions you have. And then we'll reach back out to you about um, making sure you can stay involved and give you advice on how to get started and just connect the dots between making sure that people feel informed um, and also we're able to report back to you whether or not we made it past uh, 1 million acts of science. So uh, come May, when we ask you for how many contributions you did. Um, we'll be tracking through SciStarter.org and we'll also be asking you to make sure that we understand uh, what you did, even if it's not an affiliate project. So uh, we're looking forward to it. It's gonna be awesome. Um, and I'm really excited to see you all uh, participate in it. Yeah. Um, so today's a pretty short event just so we can go through how all those things work and get you excited. Um, so I don't have anything else to share, but if there are any questions, you can absolutely send us an email. Um, you can also send us a chat if you're on Zoom with us um, or on Facebook. We will respond to your queries. For anyone who is sharing a New Year's resolution, we'd love to hear it. So if you want to share it in the chat, if you want to share it on social media, I'm excited to um, learn about what you all uh, want to accomplish too. So stay tuned for my own social media post to ask you the exact same question again later. <laughs> that will be nice. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this out um, to um, close out this meeting and then send you off on your second day of the new year. Um, and, then, and then we'll be good to go. So uh, next week, 
we're actually not going to be present for Sci Starter Live. Um, there are other things happening. And so we instead are encouraging everyone to go back and watch an encore of our Project Sidewalk event because last year we played it for, or we had an event with the leader of Project Sidewalk for preparing for MLK Day. Um, and this is a great one because if any of you are really focused on service projects, this one is a very, uh, very much oriented towards um, accessibility problems in cities. And so if you're interested in urban planning, if you're interested in accessibility, um, I highly recommend it. This is one of my favorite projects. So I try to encore it often. In <laughs> um, January 16th, we'll be back. And this is where we're going to start focusing in a lot more on Citizen Science Month and preparing everyone. So for anyone who is an event planner, community organizer, or a facilitator of any means, or if you're just curious, if you want to get started um, with these um, ideas and events for April, uh, we would love for you to join us and learn about how to plan for Citizen Science Month. Events don't have to be an event where you have everyone come by, by the way. It, it could be an ongoing process. So um, to learn more about what the variations are, we'd love to have you. Um, and you can sign up on that same link um, that you use to sign up for any of these events, the SciStar.org slash go slash live. Um, on the 23rd, we'll be talking about citizen science for the classroom. So if you are a teacher or if you know any teachers or you homeschool, any of the above, we want to help you lesson plan for Citizen Science Month. So adding in a little bit of citizen science into your day um, as a teacher in your classroom for your students who are your children, potentially, or cousins, whoever it is, we would love to help you um, add in a little bit more citizen science to help us get to that 1 million access science goal. Um, and I'm going to pause for a moment just in case there are any, nope, we're good. No questions so far. Um, if you're looking for updates on um, this series, by the way, you can go to our blog, which is listed at the bottom here. You can also just go onto our blog and look up Site Starter Live and it should pop up. Um, it's also pinned at the top, I believe. Okay, so a lot of things happening. Um, another thing that's happening before April, in uh, February, we're gonna have another Do NASA Science Live. So if you're interested in NASA related projects, we would love to have you on board to watch that. Uh, the next one, it'll be about the thing, all things winter and ice themed um, for NASA. So if you thought NASA was just space, think again, <laughs> think again. There's a lot of earth science involved in NASA. And so um, we're actually talking a lot about earth science, but we'll talk about space science too during that one um, because cold in space has another meaning too. So get excited. Awesome. All right. And lastly, these are our resources that you've seen every time if you listen in on any of these uh, events. So you can ask the community, you can ask the project leaders, you can send us an email. I've mentioned it a couple times, but info at sizechart.org is always your go-to. You can take a training, you can find your next project. We also have a podcast that was actually just nominated as a top 10 uh, podcast uh, on citizen science. So that's pretty exciting. Um, take note of that. We're pretty, pretty cool. Um, so we'd love to have you engaged in those ways as well. And um, yes, Globe Observer. Did I, oh, because of the NASA prize, sorry. Sorry, Roland, yes. Um, yeah, all the Earth science for NASA, including like Globe Observer, Globe Observer Clouds, um, Land Cover, Mosquito Mapper, and um, Trees, and then also Eclipse when we get closer to April too. Yeah, another reason to get excited for April. There is so much happening. Um, good example there. Yeah, a, a couple other project or pages that you might find useful too are scistar.org slash Eclipse. So if you need information on Eclipse projects or um, the NASA project specifically, you can go to scistar.org slash NASA um, and a couple others. So you can kind of just search around and see what, what makes sense for your interests or I'll reach out to us uh, for advice there. So uh, we look forward to having you on our next event if you join us on the 16th. In the meantime, please uh, look uh, take a look at our MLK Day events. You can check out what, um, what you can work on. If you're online with us, you can also take a survey um, after this event to tell us how we're doing and give advice for more topics you want to hear about because we have openings in um, February and March that we'd like to fill with things that you want to know about. So feel free to send us um, information in those surveys and we'll get back um, with those topics in no time. Awesome. All right. Any final words, Roland, or are we going to close out, close off, whatever the word is. Feeling good? <laughs> the rapid talking is over. Oh, no. <laughs> have a wonderful rest of your year and your day. Um, happy 2024. Happy New Year. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks.